Surprisingly, even though their history is relatively short, many figures in railroading history have been able to achieve a legend-like status in multitudes of different ways. For example, there's Casey Jones, one of the most famous American railroaders in history, who was made a legend after his passing through folk songs. Or maybe Sir Nigel Gresley, made famous through his incredible locomotive designs. Well, today I'd like to tell a story that's a little different still quite prolific in the history of railroading, just more in a completely different way. Today, we'll be taking a look at Sam Bass, a 19th century American outlaw. Famous for partially that, but more for his antics with train robbery. More specifically, when he was part of a gang that robbed over $60,000 from a train, the modern-day equivalent to about $1.5 And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the story behind how they did it as well as the story on how an everyday outlaw also became one of the more prolific figures in railroading history. So, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. In 1877, Big Springs, Nebraska was not really a town, just a railroad station with a few settlers. However, the location itself had been known for years as a spring long ago used by Indian tribes, later giving water to the travelers along the California and Oregon trails. The location where the town of Big Springs would later be established in 1883 was first called Lone Tree. It was here amid a barren prairie where a single cottonwood tree was believed to have stood for about a hundred years at the time, which served as a beacon for immigrants, overland stagecoaches, and the Pony Express. In 1867, the Union Pacific Railroad barreled through the area and established a water station utilizing the nearby spring for its steam-powered locomotives. The railroad named the stop Big Springs, from which the town would later take its name. Years later, in the summer of 1867, two Texas cowboys known as Sam Brass and Joel Collins would make their way to the area. Both, unfortunately, would suffer pretty rough young lives with Samuel Bass being born in Mitchell, Indiana on July 21, 1851, soon orphaned after his 13th birthday and afterward raised by an uncle, left home at the early age of 19. He would work at a sawmill for about a year in Rosedale, Mississippi, but eventually drifted west towards North Texas, where he tried his hand at wrangling cattle in Denton. Unfulfilled by the hard work and little pay, he bought a horse and raced it, living off the proceeds for several years. After the horse became too old to race, Bass and his partner, Joel Collins, formed a cattle drive for several ranchers in San Antonio. In 1876, they drove the cattle to Nebraska, but squandered their proceeds, gambling it all away in the gold rush town of Deadwood, in the Black Hills area, thus leading Samuel Bass to his life of crime. I unfortunately wasn't able to find many specifics on Collins' life, but Joel Collins would start working as a bartender in San Antonio, when, as we know, he met Sam Bass. At the time, both were avid horse racing fans and quickly hit it off. Before long, the pair were running a crooked horse racing operation, and for about a year, the pair traveled about the Texas racetrack circuit until the professional horsemen caught onto their scheme. At this point, Collins had done over four cattle drives, from Texas to the Kansas cow towns, from 1871 to 1874, and soon devised another scheme. Collins soon brought a herd of several hundred cattle to be driven north. To finance the sale, he signed several promissory notes to pay after the cattle were sold. He, along with Sam Bass and another man named Jack Davis, then rode north to Nebraska, where they sold the herd for about 8,000. However, instead of returning to Texas to pay off the notes, they headed to the gold-filled hills of Deadwood, South Dakota, arriving in the fall of 1876. They found mining impossible due to the snow and freezing rains, but undaunted would move to other pursuits. Jack Davis would build a brothel for a prostitute named Maud, while Bass and Collins would begin a freighting outfit. However, all three would spend more time at poker tables, drinking, and frequenting the ladies than they actually did on their business. Before long, the money was gone, and the trio would return to being outlaws. At this point, three more men joined them, named Tom Nixon, Bill Heffridge, and Jim Barry. The gang, now known as the Black Hills Bandits, would start by robbing a number of stagecoaches in the Deadwood area, killing one stagecoach driver. Finding stagecoach robberies not that profitable, especially when split between six people, they would soon decide to rob a train. And on September 18th of 1877, they did just that. And now we'll get into the details of that situation. On September 18th, 1877, the gang made their way to the more isolated station at Big Springs, and at this point captured the station master, John Barnhart, completely destroying his telegraph in the process. 
and forced him to signal the eastbound express train to stop. At 10.48 p.m., the six bandits boarded the train, finding only $450 in the mail car safe, but then would go to rob the larger safe. However, found this easier said than done, since this safe had a timed lock on it, which would only open up upon the train's arrival to the destination. They would beat the express messenger brutally to get him to open it, however, the messenger was unable to. The outlaws were undeterred, however, and continued to search the train car, and would end up finding some wooden boxes. These wooden boxes revealed $60,000 worth of freshly minted $20 gold pieces. Why these were not in a safe is unknown, but the bandits began to then rob them and the train passengers systematically. In the end, they would escape with over $60,000 in freshly minted gold coins. Not just that, however, also about $450 from the mail car safe, and about $1,300 and four gold watches from the passengers. Splitting the money up six ways, beneath the lone tree of Big Springs, the outlaws would split into pairs, each heading in a different direction. Sam Bass and Jack Davis, posing as farmers, rode south in a one-horse buggy with their share of the haul stowed under the seat. Upon making it back to Texas, Sam Bass would explain his newfound wealth as being earned through a strike in the Black Hills area, and after this he would soon start another gang, continuing to rob trains in Texas until he would be killed the following year. That being on July 21st in 1878, on his 27th birthday, where he was ambushed by Texas Rangers, that being at Round Rock. In the meantime, Jack Davis, who had tried to persuade him to escape to South America with him, was never seen again. A week after the robbery, Joel Collins and Bill Heffridge were both killed by a sheriff's posse near Buffalo Station, and some $20,000 was recovered. Jim Barry was captured and wounded in Mexico, Missouri, and died two days later. Tom Nixon would disappear, carrying, according to Barry, $10,000 never to be seen again. It has long been thought he went to Canada, and that unfortunately is the fate of the entire gang, or what we know at least. This robbery alone is the single largest heist in the history of the Union Pacific Railroad, and today the site of where this occurred is designated with a historical mark. You can still visit Big Springs, and personally I hope to one day, and it's located 10 miles east of the Nebraska-Colorado border, which sits near the junction of I-76 and I-80. It's believed there was possibly another bandit involved, that involving a man named William Collins, Joel's brother, who claimed he participated in the Big Springs robbery, but this isn't really confirmed, at least like the other six were. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the story of the Big Springs, Nebraska train robbery, one of many railroading legends in America, and the story about how Sam Bass and his gang reached that same level of fame. It really goes to show you, in terms of railroading, it seems as if there's nothing but history to be made, and even better learned about. And hopefully you guys will leave this video with a new legend, or a little bit more knowledge about that legend than you already had before. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content, and let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, and if I should make more of them. It was a blast to do, but I understand it's a little different from the norm, so be sure to leave any recommendations or thoughts below in the comments. They are greatly appreciated. As always, guys, thanks again for watching. And with all of that being said, shout out to my patrons, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.